The Road to Strength Podcast is now brought to you by Rob Levine, the heavy hitter. Uh, we've been really happy to have him jump on as a sponsor. I've personally used them this past year. Uh, my wife was in a car accident, and uh, they were able to help us along every step of the way through getting properly compensated, making sure we weren't getting taken advantage of by the car insurance companies, and helping through with uh, medical payments. So uh, if you've been in a car accident, it's definitely worthwhile. Just pick up the phone and see how they can help. All right, you ready? Let's do it. Let's let it rip. What's going on, guys? Dr. Matt here, host of the Roadie Strength Podcast. we got Paul Johnson back on for round two. What's going on, Paul? Just legs are tired. That's really <laughs> it. Fair enough. Maybe a little bit sore after running 3,000 miles? Uh, just a little bit. <laughs> when did you get back? We finished April 21st, and then I got back to Newport on 23rd, Okay, I think. 23rd or 24th. Two, two three days to kind of celebrate in uh, New York City? Oh, well, it's more like <laughs> die in the hotel room on the bed and then get on a plane two days later. Nice. I saw some champagne being spilled, though, on the Instagram. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, uh, we had, I think they had like 40 bottles of champagne for the finish line. No like, way. Nowhere we're, no way we were going to use all that. <laughs> nice. Maybe one bottle would have been good enough. Yeah. Yeah, there was. I think it was that picture. That was a, it was a funny like um, uh, two picture. I think in that post, one was uh, you and um, Rob. Yeah, Rob pouring champagne over each yep. other's heads, and the next one I think was you guys crossing streams. Or maybe not crossing. Oh, we weren't but, crossing. No, sorry, streams. sorry. <laughs> we weren't we're opposite directions away from each other. Not on the same day. The two different days there. Yeah, the yeah. Um, <laughs> New York, and then I want to say that was like the last night of Oklahoma. That I mean. That was a beautiful picture. It's the, the sunset best, was best unreal. Picture I've yeah. ever been in my life. Yeah, that was a really good picture. I loved it. Um, but okay, so so let's get into it. So we got uh, you just completed the transcon. So last time we had you on, we were talking about the preparation, getting ready for it. Um, I'm really excited to break down. Uh, and you're just on some other podcasts recently, but breaking down like um, you know some of the highlights from the from the run, some of the lowlights from the run, <laughs> kind of how you felt and how it's been coming. Uh, you know, after you finish, how, how it's been doing getting back into running um, and recovering. But um, just a quick recap for the people who didn't see the first episode. The Transcon is a 3,000-mile run from L.A. to New York. You completed the run, um, and, and less than 400 people have ever completed this run. It's hard to say. Hard, yeah. The, the best numbers I can find are less than 400. Wait, a very small amount. Yeah, not very, a lot. <laughs> not many at all. Um, and as far as you know... I mean, I know originally you were going for the record, but you were able to finish it in 51 days, three hours yep. was the time. And uh, still one of the best times. For it's the trans- up there. It's, yeah. Do you know what, what place in that is? I have no idea. No, but, it's, um, but it's quick. I just, I'm just i thinking about like people I know who have done it recently. Mm. And I know, obviously, Pete's got the record. Mm-hmm. Um, Jenny Hoffman, she set the female record back in... T- Back in November, I believe. Oh wow! Recently, yeah. Wow. She she crushed it. She did. She went like I think she beat the previous female record by like five or six days. Like she blew it wow. out of the water. What, um, what was her? Do you know her? Forty. Oh, she was fine. <laughs> she she was she was in the upper forties. Wow. I want to okay. say like forty six or forty seven days. Like she was. Wow. She was cooking. So her Pete. Um. um uh, I forget his name now. The, the gentleman who hold the, held the record before Pete. Okay. Um, and then I think there might be like two or three others that I can think of. Okay. I have no. I mean, there's no official like record keeping. Sure. Of it, but sure. It was quick. Yeah. <laughs> there should be. They gotta like get a Wikipedia page up or something like that yeah. with the official records on there. Um, that reminds me. I I had jotted this down, but I wanted to ask you: Did you end up talking to Pete afterwards? Because I know you you talked to him before the run. Yeah. And he was giving you some advice, giving you some tips. Have you talked to him since you finished? Yeah, we. Um, he actually came out and ran with us in oh Flagstaff. Cool. Um, okay. And that was actually massive because that day, like just cumulative on my body, <laughs> I, my right ankle was not working. Like it was sure. so swollen, it was not working. I was basically hopping on one foot for like 15 miles that morning. Oh. Um, and he was, had run with us for the, the last four there until the break. Mm-hmm. And he actually brought out one of the PTs from uh, NAZ Elite. Nice. Who just like yanked on my foot and made it start working again? So um, <laughs> nice. yeah, he massive there. He was he came up there and then uh, we texted throughout the run a couple of times. Nice, and, you know, at the end a little bit too. Totally, totally. Flagstaff that would have been closer to the beginning of the run too, right? Yeah, that was day ten that I ran with him. 
Were you still on pace at that point? Or were you, were you just off the pace? No, we – so day – Day four, we're like, okay, we can't sustain seventy-five mile days. Totally. Um, I was just like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna go for the fifty. Yep. Um, do sixty miles a day. Yep. The crew had plans where they're like, once we get over the Rockies, we're not gonna tell him, and then we're gonna push the pace, and we're still gonna get the record. No way. I was, I was like, <laughs> I could tell that they were like pushing the miles. I'm like, guys, I. <laughs> I, if I'm, you want me to finish, you got to be careful. Yeah, I'm, I'm not here for the record at this point. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we, he knew at that point. It's like, yeah. hey, man, I'm not going for your record anymore. Totally, totally. That's wild. And so, like, and also, wild. Early on, the ankle would look like it was it was a big problem. Oh, it was it was terrible. <laughs> yeah. And it was something you're able to basically like get over and overcome. Like since that since that point. Yeah, I mean the it started hurting most. I think on the ninth. Okay. Um, no, because it was in the tenth, ninth, eighth. The eighth, I think we were having a lot of issues because that's when I was day eight. I was going into Prescott, Arizona. Okay. Um, we actually saw a PT there who did some dry needling. Oh, nice. And that's I remember to, seeing that story. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I was eating my Chick Fil A sandwich and yeah. dry needling. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect recovery. Gotta get the calories in. <laughs> yeah. So he, he dry needled the back of my calf and my ankle. Yep. And then. He put some sort of bandage on it to like mm. electricity and things. I, okay. I don't know. Maybe you know as a <laughs> I, I, an electricity bin, like maybe a tens unit, maybe or a power dot, or I'm not I, sure. I, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, He's okay. just like this. This is gonna help you. So, okay, I'll leave right. it on. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, to leave on while you're running. Yeah, it's like a strip of tape to leave on there while I'm running. Um, uh, interesting. Okay. I have no idea what it was. Yeah. But um, yeah, that. I mean, it still hurt. Yeah. But it helped at least a little bit. Totally. And totally. then. That night we ended, and then the next day we did two climbs to seven thousand feet. One in Jerome, and then we popped through Sedona, and then final climb up to Flagstaff at seven thousand. Cool. And I was doing okay in the morning, and then I got to like mile thirty or so, halfway through the day, and it just like started hurting again. We got to Flagstaff about five miles later. I could like I couldn't even walk on it. Ugh. Um. So I, we. Kind of took a breather for a bit. Mm. Somehow I just got it moving again. Yeah. Um, and then that that next morning in Flagstaff, it was like this is bad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you so you you hit a point where you basically like went from like running to walking to not even be able to walk on it. Yeah. So we found out that I have. I guess I do hold a record. Yeah. <laughs> that I, apparently, I have the fastest five mile split in Transcon history. <laughs> nice. Sorry. Right. Because I was doing like sub sevens down this hill in jerome just absolutely bombing down this thing and there's no it was four in the morning there's no cars out there yeah um so we think that with probably the way i was hitting my feet is mm. probably what was causing some of the issues sure because i was sure. starting to get um both issues with my right ankle but also kind of the shins on both legs as well sure yeah um and so we think that kind of like aggravated it and then just made it really worse over those next two days that was probably i mean mentally your probably biggest fear too with this whole run too right it's like what if i have an injury and i can't continue yeah i'm like i mean you know you're gonna get injured <laughs> it's just like to what degree am i gonna right. be injured can i continue to push through this or not yeah i, I definitely remember that morning in flagstaff where the sun was just starting to peak up we're like 12 miles into that point and i'm hopping around at like a 11 30 pace using just my left leg yeah and it's like there's no like what are we doing here? There's no way. Is every step painful at that point? Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> beyond like <excruciating>. that. <laughs> You're oh. like, I can't put my weight on this thing. Oh. Um, so, yeah, that having uh, having that guy come out and um, just yanked on my foot somehow and yeah. did some stuff and Manipulated I could just it. stand on it again and was like, oh, my God, I feel incredible. That was massive. That's huge. That's awesome. Some, some, and um, was that the same around the same point where you're having issues with? Um, I know you had mentioned Achilles type mm -hmm. stuff, or is that later on? Um, the Achilles was later on in New Mexico. Okay, so not too much no, further after that. Next state over. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and was that a similar thing? You were able to just kind of like work through, and then it went away. Yeah, it's just it's kind of like what we said last time, where it's like yeah. it's gonna hurt. <laughs> like you just have to accept it and yeah, keep trying to just make forward progress just keep pushing forward i feel you um one other one other uh stat i wanted to, to drop off it was uh so you're doing 59 miles per day on average average yeah average yeah um which is a lot that's still 
over a mar- over two marathons. Over two. Almost, <laughs> almost day. two and a half, not quite. Yeah, but. pretty close. So I, I, I've been telling people, like, hey, like I'm, I'm getting Paul back on the podcast. Like, oh, cool, cool. I'm like, yeah, he ran 59 miles a day. They're like, oh, wow. I'm like, that's over two marathons a day. They're like, it's like it's kind of hard for people that when the numbers get that big, they don't know they don't understand the scale of it. The, the scale is yeah. like when you put it as two marathons a day, like, oh, I can't even run one marathon. <laughs> it's like, it's like yeah, every day for 50, 50 51 days, and every three day, hours, in three hours, <laughs> yeah, in three hours, every day. Like, oh, that's that's pretty impressive. I'm like, yeah. Um, so I have a couple of rapid fire questions for you too, um, and I'm curious to hear your answer on these. So um, first one I got weirdest experience that happened during the whole transcon weirdest like bizarre like oh. a good story <laughs> um it's got to be new mexico because okay. oh god i hate that state now really oh my gosh yes. i know the other it's the a other wasteland <laughs> i never oh. want to go back <laughs> the other state you weren't a fan of was indiana right oh yeah <laughs> that's, that's, a, a, that's a different story that's a different story right. no but weirdest thing new mexico um i had spent most of we had just crossed into new mexico so this was our second day in New Mexico, mm-hmm. and we were stopped on the side of the road because I was, this was one of the days where I only got like 30 miles. I was like sleepwalking the entire day oh. along the side of the road. And the one point that we stopped at, we're just, you know, there's tons of trash littered on the ground on the side of the road. And we're looking at it, and we're like, oh, this is someone's driver's license, like all cut up. Huh. And we're like, that's, that's weird. kind of weird, whatever. And then we're looking more and we find like credit cards for the same person all cut up and like all these different like, Driver's license, credit cards. Um, oh, like a bunch of them. Like from the same person. Interesting. And okay. then we're looking at the dirt, and like the dirt dirt looks all disturbed, and we're like, oh, no. Oh, somebody was buried right here. <laughs> oh, no. Like they murdered somebody in this spot, like, and they, his body's in here. We're, we're, Yikes. we're not coming back. Yikes. <laughs> we're convinced. Wow. We're so like, <laughs> so they try to destroy the evidence of the identity of the person, I, I guess? I don't know. Or? It's just like, it looks like a crime scene. Like all his ID and his cards were all cut up, and just the dirt was like he either got <laughs> kidnapped there or buried there. One of the two. Yikes! I feel like that's a very New Mexico thing to happen. Not that I know much about New Mexico, but it just seems like the vibe in New Mexico. Yeah, I mean, all the there is not a single street sign that doesn't have ten bullet holes in it. Really? Oh, yeah, they're just it's the all, Wild West. Just <laughs> driving down the road, take a pot shot, and keep going. Jeez. Um, is, um, what about Indiana? You said that in- Indiana wasn't the friendliest uh, thing you I did? just, uh, those people suck. <laughs> really? The, um, when we were leaving Illinois and mm-hmm. getting into Indiana, we were like three miles out. We're like, dang, these, these cars drive like jerks. Yeah. Like they're yeah. buzzing real close to you, trying to like run you off the road. So I started carrying, uh, my running pole with me Yep. without the rubber tips on it. So it was like yeah. a steel car by tip. And if a car got close, I would like swing at it or jab at it and they would go around you um <laughs> otherwise they wouldn't give you any space yeah and then i kid you not as soon as we crossed the line into indiana yeah like any car that drove by you was either yelling at you or like telling you to get off the road or like trying to like force you off with their cars really even though it was like a six foot shoulder and it's yeah a four lane road six foot shoulder i'm all the way over by myself and they're like ripping down the lands, like yelling at you to get out of the road. It's insane. It's like, and that was the only state where people were really, like, mean. I mean, <laughs> people are mean everywhere. Like, no, no, sure. nobody likes pedestrians. Sure, but sure. But Indiana was, like, the highest. The highest, The highest yeah. percentage. Of, wow, that's bad. All right, well, to flip the script, what was the best state? I know you had a couple highlights. Yeah. Uh, Kansas or Ohio. Okay, yeah, I'm it's, saying it's Ohio. A, it's a toss-up. I mean, yeah. if it didn't rain so much, because we got all the rain in Ohio, I think, yeah. like, three or four days straight. That's tough. If it wasn't for that, probably Ohio. Yeah. But Kansas was Kansas was the first time I saw civilization again. Sure. And that was sure. really good. Yeah, because like that weird in between, what is it like after you're out of the – did you go through Colorado? No, we no. stayed south. So we okay. – as soon as we left Flagstaff, yep. you go straight into Navajo Nation. Sure. And you're in the reservations the whole way across into New Mexico. And yep. then we didn't leave – the reservations until Taos, New Mexico, which is right where you cross the Rockies at. Mm. Um, and I think it was like almost exactly two weeks from the time we left Flagstaff to the time we got to Taos. Gotcha. And it's just like, you're going through this nothingness. Nothing. There's nobody around. You're like, this run's going to suck. And then you realize you get over the Rockies. You're like, Oh my God, we're a third of the way there already. <laughs> and it's just like those third is like nothing oh that's yeah so that makes for a very boring boring run yeah and it is this the same as like i know normally when you train you're not listening to music you're not listening to um 
like podcast, something like that. Is that, is that do you do the same thing when you're when you're running the transcon? Um, it depends. So I don't do podcasts. I do music. Oh, you do music. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, depends. It depends. Yeah. Um, whatever keeps me awake. <laughs> Fair, <honestly>. enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair um, enough. Fair enough. But yeah, you, usually like music or something. I just yeah. I don't even know what I'm listening to. It's just playing. Yeah, something to keep your mind semi active from not falling yeah. asleep. <laughs> gotcha. When you and then and th- that was probably the case for you for like most of the run, right? Just kind of like almost like zombie mode. Just like just keep moving. Yeah, because. Like we had, we got a pretty good schedule going where I would take seven, like set. We found seven minutes for a nap was like ideal for me. Really? Um, I mean, because like ultra, you do a lot of these small naps for really long events. Yeah. Just to you've got to sleep at some point. Quick recharge the batteries. Yeah, and it makes a world of a difference. Mm. And so I would do like three seven minute naps throughout the morning, and then mm-hmm. a twenty minute nap um, at lunch. Okay. And that seemed to work pretty well for sustaining me. But yeah, you're just tired all the time <laughs> so you're almost probably in and out of that sleep state like kind of groggy just moving yeah and how like how was the sleep during the night uh terrible <laughs> oh, um we we had six hours allocated to i could sleep if i was asleep okay so, um so at least on the back half it was from 10 30 p.m to 4 30 a.m sure. um i am i probably averaged four to five hours a night Okay. Um, but it also was like waking up every 15, 30 minutes. And mm. like my body was just in such shock that I would wake yeah. up. I'd be cold all night, but I'd wake up soaked in sweat every single morning. No way. So just like I'm like bathing in my sweat every night. Oh, that's tough. Almost like feverish. It was, it was like having a fever. Yeah. Jeez. And then ha- ha- since, since you've come down and recovered, has that gone away? Yeah, I had it yeah. for the first night in New York. And then sure. I kind of went away nice so <laughs> it was great. Good. the body recovered pretty quick from that yeah um all right so we got we got best best state worst state um how about best experience and i think i know what this one is but like best like a, or a highlight experience that you had when you were there yeah i mean new york is hard to top um, sure. coming into the city um i feel like that's a gimme though yeah probably one of the schools that we ran by and like I'm in the middle of middle of nowhere, yeah. farm country, yeah. and all of a sudden there's just a high school or middle school full of kids like all out on the road cheering. You're like, where did this come from? Like, who are these people? Why are they following us so closely? Yeah, yeah. So that was those are pretty cool. That's all, and I and that's why I, I thought you might say because there was a post you made talking about um, there was one. I think there was one kid in particular that made a uh, a big impact on you. Ah, shoot, I have it down here somewhere. Do you remember the name of her? There was a... Um, was it Scarlet? Scarlet. Yeah. Yeah. What happened with Scarlet? You have to watch the documentary to find oh, out. Oh, okay. It's... All right. Plug all it right. in. Plug it. Plug it. I can't give that one away. Documentary's <laughs> coming soon. All right. Were people commenting, like, what happened, what happened with Scarlet on the on the uh, Instagram? Um, there were a couple. Yeah. And I yeah. was yeah. like... Uh, right, you got to wait and yeah, see. You have to wait till the fall. Love it. Love it. So, the, okay. Let, yeah. So, the, the documentary... Still in progress right now. Yep. I mean, obviously, all the running stuff has been yeah. All filmed. the post production, everything's getting taken care of. So, but still get the f- last final things to yep. take care of. And in the fall, it's coming out. It is. Uh, we don't have a date yet. But okay. Yeah. Sometime fall. in the fall. And is is it going to be? Do you have any idea? Like, is it a YouTube production or is it? A... It's it's a full length documentary. No. Way. Yeah. I think we're. I think right now we're looking at about ninety minutes. Sweet. So it's it's gonna be good. It's gonna be juicy. Let's go. That's exciting. Potential like um like film festival type thing? Or? Um I'm not gonna say no. All right, we'll see what happens. We're, we're yeah. looking into a couple of things. That's awesome. All right, we gotta we gotta wait and see for Scarlet. Uh, are on the edge of our seats for that one. Was that one of the a highlight though, an experience? Um I wouldn't necessarily call it a highlight, but okay. it was like an impactful experience. Totally. Yeah. Cool. I like it. Good, good. Not giving away too much. I That's like right. it. <laughs> um, I got another rapid fire question for you. Favorite thing, and uh, and the flip side of this will come in a second. But favorite thing that you ate and and drank. T- two separate questions. Favorite thing that you ate during the whole trip. Favorite thing that you drank during the whole trip. Um, or your go to maybe. Uh, gushers and fruit roll were like <laughs> the lifesavers on the uh, the back half. We switched to those. Um, <laughs> Yeah, anytime I got gushers, like you could ask the crew, like my face would just light up when I see them <laughs> holding gushers again. I was like, yes. Um, drink, jeez, 
Water? Water, I guess. Yeah. Like, you get to a point where it's just like, I don't want anything besides water. Yeah. Because it's just like... Were you doing a lot of, like, um, Gatorade or, like, electrolyte drinks, too? Or? Um, we do a lot of Tailwind, which is like a... Okay. Yeah. I've heard caloric, that. Caloric drink with electrolytes. Um, we did uh, an electrolyte-specific drink. Mm-hmm. Didn't really have any calories to it. And yep. then... Um, caffeine and yeah a lot like of bas- caffeine basically like pre-workout mix in uh yeah we're doing about not crazy we're probably like three to four hundred milligrams a day oh that's not bad at all it's, it's really not yeah considering you know it's like what three four cups of coffee what's your normal um i probably do about 150 a day at home okay so higher than what you normally yeah so your normal is very low i literally which is great <laughs> it's good yeah i just do um i just do my pre-workout in the morning before yeah. i go do gym or run and Totally. That's really it. What and when you're on the trip, what well, what was you uh, what were you um like was it a pre workout or it was how, a pre workout? Yeah. yeah. So I would um they'd wake me up. I'd eat like my overnight oats nice, and then nice. I'd slam that back during the um probably in the first fifteen minutes while I'm trying to get my legs to start working again. Totally. What what brand was it? You say um it's Kino Body. Okay. Kino Body Octane, I think is what it's called. Is it more made for like endurance type? No, like, it's, no, it's really? made for get your pump on and go to the gym type of thing. <laughs> nice. But so it gets I've, you fired up. It gets you fired up. It's like <laughs> I've I've been using it for a, a couple of years now. It's just like I don't really have a crash with it. Yeah. And it's just kind of like you're used to it. Your I'm body takes it, it yeah. well. So probably not best to switch something up right before you do a trans exactly. type of thing. Exactly. Like <laughs> this just works. It's not it. coffee. I don't like coffee, so like this is fair. My, my source of caffeine. Love it. That's great. Um, and then the flip side of that was, what was your least favorite thing to eat and and to drink? Um, I'm not gonna say who. Okay. But one of the crew members <laughs> put my chocolate recovery protein drink into my vanilla milkshake. Oh no! Because <laughs> I thought it would be a good idea, and I dr- it was like it was it was about five in the morning. I'm yeah. drinking my milkshake left over from the day before, and then they come. I give it back to them. They come back out with it. Yeah. And I go to take a sip. And I'm just like, I literally just spit it. I was like, What is this? <laughs> this is disgusting. Yeah. They're like, what did you do to my milkshake? <laughs> Oh, uh, and they're like, oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. I'm like, here, you drink this and tell me it's fine. <laughs> so the, the mixture of the chocolate and vanilla it, it together? Just, it, it wasn't even mixed up well. It's just like, oh. <laughs> it was just like chocolate, like protein powder in like a vanilla milkshake that wasn't even mixed up. And, <laughs> From uh, like the day before. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was not ideal. <laughs> oh, um, nice. But if I never see another golden Oreo again in my life, I'm okay with that. I've had enough Oreos. Golden Oreo, specifically, oh, yeah. not the chocolate ones. Yeah, because the golden ones we would put in the pancake batter every morning. Oh. And so I would eat like pancakes with Oreos in them. That was like my first three hours of my day. That's all I ate. <laughs> and so you're just completely done with those. I don't want to see another Oreo again. <laughs> <laughs> what about chocolate Oreos? Uh, I think we'd be okay with those as long as yeah. they're double stuff. But not your first choice. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. I like that. I think I saw something you saying like, yeah, Oreos, no good. Yeah. I'm done with no, those. No more. That, that I mean, to me, that sounds delicious, but I get it. <laughs> um, and then another rapid fire, we got, what was it like? So, so we'll get to the finish in a second, but so your first uh, week back, what was it like? I know you said that you recovered for the couple of days, like in the hotel room in New York. But how was how were those first few like um, few days to a week back? Um, once you got back like into Newport, like like back into uh, I guess your normal routine. Yeah, um, I mean New York was just kind of sleep all day type of thing. Yeah. Um, so I spent well, we finished on Sunday afternoon, so I spent Monday in New York, and then I flew out Sunday evening. Nice. I got to Newport at like one in the morning, um, and then Wednesday I think I woke up and went to the gym at some point. I didn't have to go back <laughs> to work till Friday. Sure. So sure. I think I went to the gym Wednesday. I think I did my first run on Thursday, and that was interesting because I'm just so used to like the sh- ultra shuffle where it's just <laughs> yeah. real like efficient yeah. foot strides and. Like, you don't really pick your feet up much. It's literally almost like you're shuffling. Yeah, yeah. Um, which you can still move pretty fast with people found. They really underestimated me on that <laughs> shuffle. They're like, oh, my God, you move so fast. Right, with, when people were jumping in and running with you. Yeah, because yeah. They, they see videos of me shuffling. They're like, oh, this guy's not – like, he's hurt. Oh, no, we not, can run with him, yeah. Like, I'm cooking with that thing. <laughs> yeah. um, but, no, I tried to go to my first – do my first run with the group on Thursday. And I was oh, like – Oh, yeah. I'm like – The run and chug. Was yeah, that your first run back? That was my first nice. run back was the run and chug. And – 
I felt like a baby giraffe. Like I couldn't, <laughs> I go to step and like my foot wants to slide, but like I'm trying to pick it up and it's just, it's I like, mean, when, it's like when you go to take a step, but there's no step there and your foot just like smacks into the ground. Sure. Sure. In, in like the dark or something. Yeah. That's what every like step felt like. No, you like retrain yourself how to run. Yeah. So it, it took probably about a week until my body like refigured it out. We're yeah. good now, but yeah. Um, yeah. And then went back to work on Friday and. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> nice, I love it. Good to go. Um, how are so, um, Remy? How many weeks do you f- ago did you finish now? Oh, uh, jeez, I don't even know. Finish on the twenty first. Today's the thirteenth. Yep, it's three weeks. Three weeks ago. How and you? Do your legs still feel sore from from finishing? Do you still feel like you no. haven't fully? No, you you feel pretty recovered now. Yeah, I, I feel fine part. now. Yeah, how's the uh, toes looking? Oh, dogs! <laughs> dogs are looking good. Are they? Are no, I mean they didn't. <laughs> no. um, I finally I went and got a pedicure because my feet were no hurting so way. much. Where did you go? Um, I don't know, somewhere on the island. Oh no man, idea. that that poor lady. I, I, man, had, that. I had to give her a, a pretty good tip. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm just gonna apologize in advance. These like, would be the worst feet you've ever seen. Yeah, I was like, she's like, oh no, I've seen everything. I'm like, okay. <laughs> what did she say? She's like, they're not the worst I've seen. I was like, Whoa. really? Yeah. Jeez. I mean, all things considered, for what I put my feet through, yeah, they look immaculate. Sure. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah, I only I lost two toenails, um, blisters and calluses everywhere. I didn't blister except for the first like two or three days. Okay. Um, and the rest are all calluses, but they're just all so painful because they're so mm. thick. Sure. Um, sure. And then I had like a, a couple corns on the front pad underneath my foot. Gotcha. Um, so really it was out of necessity of, I need her to grind these things down yeah. so they don't hurt as much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that's really it. Was it painful when she ground them down? Uh, it's more, uh, I got ticklish feet. Oh yeah. I was like, yeah. I was like, I couldn't hold still. <laughs> just not a, just not a fun experience. Yeah. Oh man. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the, um, the actual, the fundraising a little bit. So you, you ran, um, for Team Red, White, and Blue, mm-hmm. Team R- RWB, um, fen- fundraising for veterans and specifically uh, mental health. And um, I know, and I guess talk a little bit about how, um, I know that was, always the, that was always the plan for the race, um, but it really became like a, a big part of the plan, especially as you're like, hey, listen, like the, um, you know, the record, we get it. We're not, we're not for doing that anymore. Let's, let's really just push the, um, the fundraising from here on out. Um, you did also get some hate though from people oh, during that all time. The hate. Pe- people were super upset. They still are. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. Really? And I, and I remember like looking through them. I'm following you during your journey. I'm like, people are coming at him right now. And and you know what else was was really? And I want to address the haters because I'm curious to you because I think you always do an excellent job of addressing them, um, in in kind of a hilarious way. But, um, uh, one how how did how did you manage to do that while you were kind of in this like extremely fatigued state did you have somebody helping you on social media with, with doing that stuff and then um uh i forget the follow-up for that question but let's start with that <laughs> yeah so so brady was doing my social media for me nice um but that was just a matter of he would just edit stuff and like yeah. get it posted for me nice um but like any of the comments or the clapbacks <laughs> like that that was all just because they nice. would like tell me all these things that are happening and then I would read through some stuff at like lunch or before bed. Yeah. Um, and just like whatever. <laughs> I just clap back at people. Did but, it did it kind of fuel you, like fire you up a little bit? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, Cause nice. it's like you know, I am never upset that somebody is hating on me on social media. Yeah. Because all it I can does, tell. All it yeah. <laughs> all it does is just pushes it to more people. Yeah. Because they keep engaging with the post. So it's like You're it's like, okay. free publicity. <laughs> yeah. Um and so I will I'm sure, as I'm sure we know, I will purposely do things just to get people riled up on social media. Um, <laughs> Perfectly normal things. As far as like the ultra, the running community goes, like yeah. people just get really upset about they, it. I, I found that, um, you know, I love the people in the ultra running community, yeah. but I have found that there's a lot of massive egos in it sure, as well. Sure, sure. Um, and it's just like, who cares? Guys? <laughs> like, who cares? <laughs> Come on, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, when we were still doing like, pushing the record for like those first four days. Yeah. It was like, I had no time to do, I could barely even breathe. Sure. Just like, sure. I'm so focused on trying to run. And then, after that point, it was like, okay, like, yeah, we're do like, what are we doing? Like, you know, we can push for this record, but we're missing the mark on 
the whole reason that we said we're out here. Yeah. Um, and I think that whole attitude shift was pretty big yeah. for us because then um, you know, we're able to put our energy into the social media um, and the fundraising, which is why a lot of people you know, initially have been a part of this journey for so long. Yeah. And I remember on day 11, because we had left Flagstaff, um, we had started this our first full day in the reservations, I posted a video um, kind of like addressing everybody who was upset about the record and basically <laughs> saying, hey, you can be upset, but like <laughs> from the beginning, I've told every sponsor, I've told every news station, like, the record's cool, but I don't care about the record. We're here for the fundraising and everything else. I mean, look at the van. I, yeah, look <laughs> at the know, van. Like, well, case in point, it's like, look, yeah. the van is decked out RWB. Like, this is yeah. why we're doing it. <laughs> yeah, well, they had some comments on that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and it's like, we made that post, and I think, like, one of the most liked comments on there is, finally, Paul is putting out his normal content. And that was like, when we read that, we're like, oh my God, they're right. Like we haven't been like people follow an individual on social media because they enjoy the community or the, sure. the content they're putting out. But when we went into the transcon, I had to like relinquish a lot of those duties over to the team. Yeah. Right. They're still putting out good stuff, but it's, yeah. it's just, it's not, it's not me necessarily. Right. Right. Um, and being able to not have to put so much energy into the run and be able to put more into my who I am within mm. um you know social media or just being myself in general. Yeah. I think that yeah. resonated really well with people and it's like it kind of like refocused us and like okay, like we're behind on fun like we need to get the fundraising done. Yeah. And that was kind of like the big push I think that got us back on that track. I thought it was and I I think a great point. I I thought it was really interesting that one of the big thing the haters said when you were like, hey, like, we're not going for the record anymore. We're just going to focus on the fundraising and, like, getting this thing done in, like, 50 days or whatever. Yeah. And uh, people are like, oh, he's pivoting. He's pivoting. He's like, I'm like, wait, what? Like, he's been saying from the start, this the yeah. huge purpose of this whole thing is the fundraising, is the mental health, and peop just people just lost their minds. Yeah. <laughs> so I always just tell like, them, go look at the, the reel posted on my yeah. – it's pinned to the top. I posted it the second week of January. It literally says – we don't care about the record. Yeah. Um, you know, is it, would it be cool to get a record? Sure. Sure. Yeah. But it's like, yeah. I know going into it, I don't, I don't have the experience or the current fitness to get that done. Yeah. I'm going to try. I'm going to see what happens. You know, I was expecting to make it past day four. Sure. Um, but, sure. you know, things happen. The ankle blew up. Uh, well, more like, <laughs> uh, yeah, the ankle and the uh, the sandstorm one day too really messed me oh, up. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's tough. I mean, I, I, I mean, part of the reason, I actually, side side uh, thing I want to get your opinion on part of the reason I think well there's probably a million but why the transcon is so difficult is because you start in the desert <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah well I mean you can start on the east coast sure sure but then you are ending in the desert and that I would I think about how I felt in like Ohio Pennsylvania yeah I'm like I would not want to be in Arizona right now yeah that would not be good after that much fatigue yeah um I was just I was just talking to someone actually today about um having you come in and he's like um ask ask him how he thinks about uh the guy who just did Africa. Oh Seen yeah, that Russ guy? Cook. Yeah. Dude's awesome. Right? Yeah. He he was the he just was the first person to ever do the entire continent. Yeah, he was did it? um he did the entire length. So people have I guess people have done the width, but no one's done the full length oh, yeah. north to south. Mm -hmm. Um and you know, if you run straight through it, you're gonna have a bad time. <laughs> just like the geography of Africa. Sure. So he ran the entire coastline, basically. Gotcha. All the way up the uh, western side to the top. Okay. Um, I think it took him like a week, a week or two short of an entire year to do. Wow. Um, he was doing, I want to say he was doing about 30 miles a day. Okay. Roughly. Okay. Which, sure, I was, I was doing twice that, but for the length of time... It's a huge and the environment that he was in, it's like I mean, there's a lot of desert. He, going he through had there. some wild stories where like he got kidnapped at one point <laughs> and had to, he had to ransom himself away from a tribe that no kidnapped way. him. No so, way. Yeah, he's he is. I think his handle's uh, hardest geezer. He's definitely the hardest geezer. <laughs> is he old? No, he's yeah. he's a younger. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, he's not super old. I think I've seen like side story like TikToks and like Instagrams being like this is the longest road possible. And it's like somewhere in Russia to like the tip of Africa, like the yeah. longest like 
distance between two places that you can actually walk. And it's like nobody's, I don't think nobody's ever actually done it, but like if you did, you'd have to go through like three active war zones, yeah. <laughs> like all this stuff. But to go tip to tip to Africa, that's, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, just the logistics of like visas and stuff to get, that was one of his big issues was, sure. he's like at the end, he's like, they don't have the visas to get through and they're like trying and trying and they can't get them, so. <laughs> so sticking to one country well, is Sticking to one is, country is, is nice. way easier. I <laughs> highly recommend it. <laughs> nice. Um, uh, so, okay, so you're, you're coming back, you're, you're recovered, you're, you're, uh, your legs are feeling pretty good and so just before we started, you told me that you're, you're just starting to run again and you, and the longest run you've just done was, so far since you've been back he's yesterday was 16 miles yeah which for most people they see that i was like holy smokes that's over half marathon yeah but you're saying like yeah i mean all things considered it's a, it's a medium run. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, not, it's not too bad so uh kind of like um look looking ahead i know you're a couple things you had mentioned like you have a couple next steps for like races and stuff coming up in the summer yep um you said uh uh loopy looper Yep, this, which is the 24-hour race gotta go defend the title nice was this was the last time you did it last year yeah. Yep, yep. Oh wow. So that was. I mean, because I'm officially out of my rookie year of ultra running. <laughs> nice. So it's pretty good rookie it's year. A pretty good yeah. rookie year. Um, yeah. So that was my first year doing all those races. Cool. Um, and I'm basically going back and repeating them and trying to nice and Do, see if I can improve on them. Yeah. The Loopy Looper is that the one in LA? That is in Jersey. Jersey. Okay. Um, okay. It's a 3.75 mile loop. Just paved bike path kind of thing gotcha yep. and you do it as many times as you can in 24 hours basically it. real yeah. simple rules <laughs> That's, is it tough to keep track um you don't have to because they it's yeah. pr- actually pretty cool they have it set up there they um you know they have a projector set up and it's like a scoreboard and it's tracking every time you pass it's because you got a chip just like normal. oh yeah sure sure, and sure. It's, and it's, it's letting you know what position you're in for wow. your distance and time yeah that's so you can cool. like every time I would go by, I look up there. I'm like, ah, oh, damn, I'm still in second. I gotta go faster. Yeah, <laughs> that's that that would definitely drive the competitiveness. I feel like. Oh yeah, that's it's awesome. a lot of fun. And um, and that's a pretty competitive race too, right? A lot of a lot of the ultra like the serious ultra guys will do that one, guys and girls. Um, I don't, I don't Maybe. think like there's no elites elite okay. runners there. Okay. Um, I mean, definitely like there's some really good people there. Sure. Um, but I don't think. I don't think there's like elite athletes there. Gotcha. And the so the other two races you're doing are more like where the elites go. The the um, eastern states, the hundred miles. Yeah. So eastern states. Um, yeah, you'll get some people there because. Um, oh, what's his name? Carl. Um, I forget his name now. Yeah. But um, his nickname's like the goat. Okay. He's run like. Um, he's the most. He has the most winningest record for 100-mile races. Carl Metzler. Okay, that sounds familiar. I think that's his name. But uh, he was running that race last year as yeah, well. Yeah, Metzler. Yeah, so he and I actually DNF'd at the oh. same point together. We, <laughs> rode the, we rode the bus back to our cars. Nice. Um, nice. So, yeah, you start getting some of the um, – some bigger names getting into, like, the, you know, tougher trail races. Sure. Um, and then, obviously, UTMB is, like – Yep. You've got – all the big names from all over the world there. That's cool. How long is that one? A uh, hundred. It's a hundred miles, but it's like hundred five, hundred six. Okay, think. yeah, and that's all through the Alps. Yeah, so yeah. it um it circumnavigates Mont Blanc in the French Alps. Yep. So you start in France, Chamonix, and then you go into Italy, Switzerland, and then back around through the northern end into France again, all in the same race. And you're and you're doing each of those three races within like a month time frame, right? Something yeah, like that. So yeah. So Loopy Looper is one weekend. Eastern States the weekend after. So I'll get like five days off, and then <laughs> three weeks after that I'll be in France for UTMB. Nice. So plenty of recovery happening plenty. there. <laughs> I, I, got, I got at least three days. I'm good. Nice. Nothing. Nothing compared to what you just did. I feel like. Yeah. He's, yeah one foot in front of the other. <laughs> there you go. And actually, another question that um, I had someone ask me is like, like oh, you got to ask him like. Is it once you hit a certain rhythm, like does it start to like get easier as you're doing the transcon, or is it just com- is it just like harder and harder and harder every day? It it just sucks. <laughs> it's just it's it always it doesn't just, get it just, easier. It doesn't, just every day is just hard. Every day is just hard. Yeah. Um, you had I mean it's you've got highs and lows, right? Sure. So yeah. You know they'll they'll have like a five mile stretch where it's like oh I'm unstoppable I'm gonna yeah. set, I'm gonna set a land speed record today yeah and then there's 
three minutes later, you're like, I'm going to die out here. <laughs> like, it's... <laughs> That's just part of the sport. So when you have moments like that mentally, where you're like, "I'm gonna die," do you like, do you stop and rest, or do you just be like, oh, "Just fucking go, uh, just keep going"? Or does it depend? Maybe it, it depends. Yeah. Um, like, as long as I'm still awake, sure. It's like, just all right, move. Keep I'm going. awake. Just keep like, going. Yeah. I've done it enough now to it's at the point where I know when I when I want to sleep versus I need to sleep. Sure. Um. And, like, the first half of the trans con was figuring out, okay, do you need to sleep or do you just want to sleep? Because if yeah. you just want to sleep, suck it up. Like, yeah. we got to keep moving. I always want to sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like... um, but, yeah, the uh, the tough part is, like, the first hour of the day, every single day, is the absolute worst. Really? It's like, my body's super stiff. It's cold. It's dark out. And it's just, like, mentally, it's like, we are never going to get to New York. Yeah. And then the sun comes. I get a nap. The sun comes up. I get some caffeine, and we're fine. And then you're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because he, he was asking, like, I wonder if, like, you know, because sometimes, like, you're in a run, like, this, I mean, I don't know how much this would translate. It sounds like it doesn't. But you're in a run, like, the first few miles are really tough, and all of a sudden you, like, hit this rhythm, and you're like, oh, I'm feeling great. I can keep going. Uh, but it sounds like it's just just hard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, day, you do hit a point where, like, the body has finally started to adapt to, sure. like, the load you're putting on it. Sure. Um. You know, talking with uh, with Pete, mm-hmm. I think he said, like, day 14 is when he's like, I've got the rhythm, I'm good. Nice. Um, for me, it was, like, day 16. Okay. Um, and day 16, I think, was the first time I ran pretty much pain-free on my ankle. Nice. Um, and then the body's just adjusting to the load. And so mm-hmm. you see, like, if you look at my mileage, I mean, we've also cl- just cleared the Rockies at that point. Sure. I, so that's when I started banging out like the back-to-back 65-mile days. Yeah. It's kind of once I got past that hurdle, like day 16, and I've like my body's kind of adjusted. Yeah. And you were looking just from your Instagram, like you were looking good, Don't, like those yeah. runs. There's definitely some runs where you weren't looking so hot. But during <laughs> that, that time, you were looking good. There, yeah, there's some where it's like, <laughs> like, oh, he's just barely getting along there. Yeah. <laughs> just oh, barely yeah. scraping by, but still moving forward. That's all yeah. you can ask for. <laughs> Um, and I know we, we talked about this a little bit last time, so we don't have to dive into too much detail with it, but you had a, one of the big things you mentioned, like right when you finished, like, Hey, I got all this like admiration, all this congratulations, but I feel like it's misplaced because my crew did so much like Mm -hmm. to help me when I, when I was on this race. Um, and not only the crew, but the people that, like that, that jumped out and ran with you during the state. So, um, I guess give a, give a brief mention on like what, what the, the daily routine was like and how like the crew kind of like helped you. Cause you had somebody cooking. They did everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> literally uh, everything. They literally did everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, like, they would wake me up at 4.45 <laughs> in the morning. They already have breakfast made. Like, they're, you know, they've been up for, like, 15 minutes already. Yep. Um, they're, like, force-feeding me. They're babysitting me to make sure I don't fall back asleep while I'm eating <laughs> breakfast. And, like, I'm actually getting dressed. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, they get me over to the spot. They wake me back up again. I'm, like, my little nap while we're driving to the start. And then they just kick me out the door and, like, they just... You know, they're feeding me, they're, do, like, whoever's in the RV that morning is, like, doing laundry, doing grocery shopping. It's like, all right, here's Paul's laundry for the past four <laughs> days. Like, go do, go wash it. Um, so, yeah, like, literally everything except, like, the running and, the eating, actual running. and eating my food. Sure. Like, they did everything. That's unreal. Um, so, it's like, they've done so many things I have no I, I didn't even know they did because it's just like, <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. Part of the reason this, we're doing this podcast today is because I, when, I, when I messaged you, I went, I went down to run Newport. And I got a new pair of running shoes for myself because I'm, yeah. I'm training for that triathlon. And uh, I'm like, yeah, like, have you seen Paul back in here? He's like, oh, yeah, we, we ran with him. Like, we run in Charlie, this and that. He's been here a bunch of times. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Like, uh, yeah, um, and we're talking about the transcon a little bit. He's like, yeah, there was a, there was a crazy part at one point. Like, um, he called. And his, oh, it was Ed. It was, it was Ed. Ed. Yeah. yeah, it was he, Ed. He called, and, and he's like, uh, he's like, hey, is this Paul? And you just weren't even speaking English. You no. were just so out of it. And he's like, uh. Put, put Rob on the phone. <laughs> He's like, all right. Yeah. And, I, and I guess you had like lost, you needed a new um, a, a trekking pole or something like yeah, that. The, or a new um, pair of shoes or something. I, th- we, I think he helped us out twice. He helped yeah. <laughs> with the trekking pole and the shoes. Yeah. Um, we couldn't get the shoes that we needed from Hoka because my foot had, uh, with the, my foot swelling. Oh. And Hoka's like, it was it was the uh, Cielo's X1s, the carbon okay. whatever shoe. Sure. And Hoka's like, Oh, they're out of stock. Like you won't be able to get them for a month. And we're like, "What do you mean?" Uh, okay, so you know, I texted Adam at the run store. Yeah, and I was like, "Hey, can you help us out?" He's like, "Yeah." So I gave all his information to Rob, and Rob started sorting it out. And then 
I guess they had the shoes. Yeah. Um, and Ed called me, um, <laughs> trying to get some answers on things. I remember answering the phone. Like I didn't have the store number saved. Were you running at the time? No, I was oh, actually yeah. sitting in the van at this point. Okay. And I was like, answer. I was like, hello. And they just started talking to me. I'm like, who is this? <laughs> it's, like, it's Ed from the run store. I'm like, oh, Ed. And he's asking me all these questions. I was like, I have no idea what he's saying. <laughs> I just kind of like looked at Mike, one of the other guys with us. I was like, you talk. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that's pretty much on point for what he was saying, what he was telling me. But uh, you got it all figured out. He, he was able to – how did he get the shoes to you? I don't know. The, <laughs> uh, the crew figured it out. Somehow they were able I to get it know, to you. I just keep running and they yeah. say, hey, your shoes are here. I'm like, great. Let's put them on. How did you, um, how did you lose the pole or how did it break? Uh, a car. Oh, sh- I can remember you saying that. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. so um, – those poles, I ha- I lost. How many poles did I lose? <laughs> I broke three poles. <laughs> really? So I brought I brought two sets with me, right? Because yep. I'm like, I'll have a spare set in case I break one. Um, and so one pair I kept like the rubber tips on for the road. It just yeah. works way better on the grip. Sure, sure. And um, I was messing around and i javelined <laughs> one of them to Brady on the side of the road, like 40 feet in the air, and it landed right on like. It snapped it. You sure? It snapped sure. like the release mechanism, so it couldn't like clip into my gloves, and I was like, "That's probably not covered under the warranty." I was, yeah, you. I was like, "All right, user error on my part." So like, I was like, "It's all right. It's yeah, okay. It's we have spares. I got a spare pole. It's not a big deal." Um, and then I was in Pennsylvania, so that was that was Missouri. Okay. And then in Pennsylvania, you know, there's a lot of hills in the middle of Pennsylvania, which hmm. most people don't realize. Yeah, so I know. You, had no you idea. got the Allegheny Mountains. Okay. Or Appalachian Mountains rolling through there. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I actually did more vert per day in Pennsylvania than I did in the Rockies. Wow. Because there's no flats. It's just up, down, up, down, up, down all day. Sure, okay. Um, But we were doing a hill climb. I had probably, that was my first day in Pennsylvania, so we just left Ohio. I had probably 10 to 15 people with me. Mm-hmm. And some of them were like like middle schoolers. Um, and this truck is like barreling down this hill. Yeah. Okay. And again, we're in like a five foot wide shoulder. Like we're not even close to the roadway. Yeah. And like you're watching them, and you can tell when cars are they're gonna come over. Yeah. It was like texting or something, and the car like swerved all, like all the way over the white line into our lane. And usually, like if a car is coming near me, I can see them coming. I'll like wiggle my pole and just like get their attention and they're like oh shit this guy's gonna hit me with his pole i should probably move and <laughs> what I'm, does the wiggle look like are you like no it's just like i don't know i'm just like standing there and it's just like <laughs> i stick it out to the side and it's like lapping up like a like, like oh a, i should probably not get hit by that pole yeah it's like your <laughs> yeah. car is gonna run into this thing and, right right um it worked it works great on like winding like mountain roads sure, sure. Uh, when people are like not expecting a pedestrian there <laughs> um but this was like a straight away wide shoulder and He's coming right at us. I'm like, oh, my God, he's going to hit us. And at the very last second, he, like, looked up and, like, swerved. Oh, my God. And he, I mean, like, the whole crowd of us, like, jumped to the left away from him. Sure. And, like, he just cracked my pole and, like, broke it right in half. Um, Did he stop? Oh, no. They (laughs) never stop. He's like, oh, shit. They're out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Because if he did stop, he was going to have a hole through his windshield. (laughs) Um, and how many were people were with you at the time? Uh, like 10 to 15. So we would, we would have been fighting 10 to 15 people. Yeah, well, I had a lot of witnesses that said I had to defend myself. <laughs> yeah. It would be another burial. Not yeah. not only in Mexico. You get one in Pennsylvania, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. They're, uh, but, yeah, so it cracked my, cracked my pole in half. I'm like, well, good thing I have a spare. And then my spare, the next day, I punched a car in the side view mirror because mm-hmm. it was turning right. Uh, I was coming up another hill and it was turning right off a of cross street. Yeah. And they never stopped and they never looked right as I'm like walking up the hill. Yeah. And I had to like step sideways to avoid getting run over. And just, sure. You know, somehow his mirror hit my fist, <laughs> which my pole was in. So it cracked yeah. like the mechanism again. I was like, dude, I have no spare poles. Like oh. this, they're all like, they're all out of stock on Amazon. So the, the, the Lakey. Yeah. Lakey. Lakey. Uh, yeah. Lakey. Lakey. Lakey yeah. Those are the same ones I have. I feel like those are hard to break. They are. I've never <laughs> broken a, a, but a car at 60 miles an hour, turns yeah, out. Yeah, I, I guess that'll do it. Um, switching gears slightly, there's a, there's a picture that you had posted um, immediately after your run, which I thought was pretty fascinating, where, and a lot, of, a lot of people did too. There's a lot of comments on it. Your, your um, before and after pictures, hmm. your weight before and after, you only lost three pounds. 
By the finish. By the finish. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I was down 13 pounds in the middle of the run. Wow. Um, so I'm, I went in at 175. I was down to like 160, 162. Okay. Um, and then we were able to get my weight back up to like 172 at the end. So it was like not too bad by the end. How did you, did you just eat more? Eat a lot more. Jeez, you're like, wow. A lot more donuts. So much. <laughs> need, but, need more calories. With, we're donuts are the uh, uh, often eaten food item um, there. <laughs> with, if, if we were to buy a Dunkin' Donuts, I would get a uh, dozen glazed donuts. <laughs> nice. And I would probably eat all of them within four hours. Nice. And then, you know those like mini powdered donuts at the grocery store that come in like those white yeah, bags? Yeah. So I would eat three of those bags of donuts a day. As part of like one of my main fuel sources, nice so it's calories. That's a that's a pretty he- hefty bag. Yeah, it's a lot of donuts. And you can also get those pretty easily at gas stations. And stuff. Yeah, they were super easy to find. So. Yeah, that's that's nice. How much water were you drinking each day? Did you measure it out? Or I, just just I have chugging no, just water. Always drinking. Yeah, just, just yeah, I'm sure that's an, a losing battle. Yeah. It's a constant losing battle. Um, you you mentioned this too. You you went through. I don't I don't know if you actually told the number or counted them but you went through a significant amount of shoes 22 it was 22 22 <laughs> which i mean i'm trying to do mental math there 3000 miles by 22 it's only like it averages like 160 a pair okay but like each each pair for example I, i'm putting actually releasing a youtube video tonight that explains all cool. this cool all right all right so you can go and watch <laughs> it but real quick is um you know with the amount of time that i'm spending wearing one pair of shoes Mm -hmm. like the foam's getting pretty compressed on it yeah um because it's not really getting a break to relax right and like kind of expand back out and then also with the foot shuffling i'm like Mm. scraping my treads a lot right so i wear through the bottom of the shoes on the heels a lot quicker yep um and also i just lose a lot of that cushion a lot sooner as well so i mean we were really switching out probably around two to 250 miles on each pair Mm. um like as soon as I felt any sort of like pain starting the legs, Switched. we got rid of the shoes and we brought a new pair in. <laughs> and it helped. And it helped. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, you know, luckily I had the ability to do that because we you know, had so many shoes. Right. Um, and it definitely, I think, was one of the reasons I was able to keep pushing out the you know massive volume of miles. But um, the other part is like the f- the foot swelling. Mm. So my normal size is a ten and a half. Sure. But by day three, it's an 11 and a half. And it's like, <laughs> you know, I did terrible planning on how much. I was like, I don't know how much my foot's going to swell. I was like, sure. sure, give me eight pairs of a 10 and a half and three of an 11 and we'll go from there. Yeah. It's like day three. I'm still my first pair of 10 and a half and the rest are now too small. And it's like, oh, oh no. Gosh. <laughs> so, um, you know, you cut out the toes. You make it work. Oh, um, oh yeah <laughs> nice. oh yeah you do surgery <laughs> yeah um and then things like my trail shoes mm-hmm. i wore them like twice right they have like yeah. 50 miles on them because you didn't you just didn't need them i didn't need them yeah um my gore-tex like waterproof shoes yeah i had three pairs um like a 10 and a half and then two 11s yeah and you know the 10 and a half's worn out and the 11s both have like i don't know 100 miles on them so it's just the, how mm. it's kind of spread out totally and so you have, I mean, the shoes that you have worn are those, are those pretty much toast? Like, would you ever wear any of those again? Would you? Are you gonna like donate uh, them or? Yeah, well, I'm them gonna or? donate them or, or yeah. do something with them. S- yeah. Somebody can use them, right? Sure, sure. I would never. I personally would never run in them again. <laughs> um, Fair. Just, yeah. But other people, like. It, it could be a perfectly fine shoe for somebody else. It's perfectly, yeah. it's, it's a perfectly good shoe. If you're running five Ks or you know you're just doing little runs here and there, probably fine. Yeah. yeah. If you're just looking for a shoe to run in, it's a shoe that you could run in. Yeah, yeah. But it's just the it's the foam's a bit too compressed for what you need to do with it. Yeah, it's just it's for the purpose that I use them. Yeah. They don't work anymore. Fair, fair. And how are you? We overall, I, I know I think this might be a sponsor, so I'm I'm sure the answer is uh is very good. But you're overall happy with the Hoka. Yeah, they yeah. um I mean, they don't pay me anything. Oh, so okay. I can say whatever I want. <laughs> All right, nice, nice. No, they just they just gave me the shoes. Yeah. Um yeah, I'm pretty happy with them. Um, cuz that's your normal shoe you wear that's, too, right? That's the yeah. I'm I'm starting to look at other shoes cuz like going into the Transcon, it's like I don't want to change anything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like I this is the shoe I practiced in over the summer, like I just want to keep it. Um but now I'm like starting to explore some other shoes and nice. like other brands and see kind of like, you know, what's out there. There's other shoes out there like Hoka's not 
the, the only only thing. Right. Um, and hey, it got you across. It got me across, <laughs> right? Um, but I would say the only thing I didn't like is the laces on the Cielo X1s. Okay. It's like, it reminds me of like a wiry ribbon on a Christmas present. Hmm. And I'm just like, it doesn't tie well. It doesn't stay tied. I was like, this is a terrible shoelace. I don't know why they put this thing on there. Last thing you want to do is just un- retie your shoes when, yeah. you when you're running. I was just like, that, that was my biggest <laughs> gripe was that. Yikes. There is, um, I, th- I don't know if it's, uh, I forget what distance it is, but. I think all of the – is it the marathon world records have been done in this one specific shoe? I think it's a Nike shoe. Um, a lot of them were done in – I think it's like the Alpha Fly. Yes. Or yep, something yep. and all the different variations of that. Yeah. Um, the last female record, I think, in Berlin was set in uh, a shoe by Adidas. Oh, interesting. Yeah. they. It's like the world's most expensive shoe they only wear like it's designed to only be worn for one race and then it's no, no good way. because like the construction and everything that it's just not durable and how much is it it's an expensive shoe you said it's like four or five hundred bucks so if you're looking to go win a marathon you buy that shoe or something if like you're that. if you are world record <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> eligible right right which for a marathon no way am i even close to sure that. sure Mo- yeah you know, only you know one percent of people who run marathons are and if you wore that for the transcon it last like a few hours. It would it would last <laughs> probably three hours. Yeah, and then you're like, all right, this is we'll done. Wa- it would be a waste of money. <laughs> hey, if they're sponsored, why not? <laughs> if they're going to give me, you know, in that case... A thousand shoes. A hundred of those, maybe we can make it work. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, I had a, I have a bunch of more questions for you. Uh, another one, back to the haters. Um, <laughs> I got I to gotta talk about the haters. One thing I guess that, that um, you had mentioned people were asking over and over again was they wanted the Garmin files. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which, and it's, it was almost like, I'm like, you're seeing the Strava, you're seeing the Instagram, you're seeing him in all these places. Like, how do you not believe that he's, that he's doing this run? And it's like, almost like, a, to me, it's like the same thing as people who like deny the moon landing. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, you have all this evidence. What, what do you need an extra garment? But yeah. people, there's people who are doubting. It's, <laughs> I mean, it's really simple. And it's, you know, the same reason anybody hates is they're jealous about something. Sure. Right. Sure. And I think... What it was is, you know, there really weren't any haters until we said we weren't going for the record anymore. Yeah. Which is weird because it's like, we're not here to set any records. So, sure. like, why does the data matter? But Yeah, right. Um, At that point, why do you care that about was the like data? That was like they're dying, like the hill <laughs> they were going to die on, which is hilarious because the data in Strava is literally the same exact data in Garmin. It's just a different platform that displays it. Yeah, that's what I don't understand. And so they're it's like, still GPS. It's GPS, cadence, like heart rate, all that same information is just in a different viewing form. Yeah. And so we're like, what? This is all the data. I don't know what you want here. <laughs> but then they're like, oh, until he gives us the Strava data or the Garmin data, he's cheating. <laughs> and so at that point, it's like, I'm not going to give it to you till the end because as soon as I give it to you, you're going to pick something else to argue about. Yeah. And yeah. so it's like, all right, I'll just, you can. Sure, die we'll, on this sword. We'll wait till the end, and then you can see it. And yeah. then I gave it to them, and nobody has said anything since. So, <laughs> exactly. Right, it, it just quiet. They, they quieted them, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Now the run's done. Yeah. Um, another question. There was a guy who I wasn't familiar with, but I think you, you were beforehand. The guy who ran with the motorcycle helmet. Yeah, Dead who, Scout. Dead Scout, who came and joined you. Yeah. Do you know he was going to jump jump in with you during the run? Um. Yes. So, well, so he ran with me like five times. Oh, cool. Uh, day one, I was not expecting it. Day one. Uh, yeah, so day one, I was like, oh, it would be cool if he came out because he re- he's done the Transcon three times now. Wow. He's actually going for a fourth time this September. Wow. Yeah, he's insane. He's a really good runner. Yeah. Um, I was not expecting him the first day. Yeah. But then after the first day, I pretty much – we knew when he was going to be coming out. And yeah, yeah. Hanging out. Um, but, yeah, cool dude. He's got some really cool content. He does. So what I didn't I – w- what I was trying to figure out from his content, I'm like, does he ever take his helmet off? He never breaks character. No way. Yeah. That's he, he's like going to Disney World, and you never see – you know, you go to Times Square, and Mickey Mouse is, you know, some lady you know, smoking a cigarette with the head popped up in Times Square. Yeah. But like, you go to actual <laughs> Disney World, it's like you never see Mickey Mouse without the head on. Yeah, yeah. So he's always with the helmet on. Yeah. Unre- it, it, that's got to be incredibly hot to run in. Yeah, he's insane. <laughs> he runs in all black, like yeah. motorcycle helmet, long sleeves, gloves, long pants. I'm like, dude, you're insane. Just sweating bullets. Yeah, like I don't know how you do this. And probably, so to get water, he's just like flipping the thing up and grabbing water every once in a while. Or yeah, he'll just he just like pops his visor up, gets some water, and he's good to go. <laughs> when you're talking to him, is he the visor down? 
Um, he keeps it. Um, he keeps it usually cracked just a little bit for like airflow. No way. But like, yeah. So he's he's very animated when he talks because he knows that people have a hard time hearing him with the helmet on. Sure, sure. And so he's very good at animating like what he's talking about. But there's sometimes where he says something, you're just like, oh yeah, sure, blah, blah. like whatever. Like you have no <laughs> yeah. idea what he said, and then he looks at you real funny, and you're like. Oh shit! What did he say to me? Yeah, what did you say? Sorry, what did he actually say? sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's always the worst. That's always so awkward. Wait, that was that wasn't a yes or no question. Oh, yeah. sorry, <laughs> my bad. Um, and and going along with that, obviously, tons of people came out, and you and I think you had said like there were no solo miles, kind of like during your or or is that kind of just a theme it, of like you you always almost had somebody with running with you? It depends. Yeah. Um, on the back half, like from Kansas on, we had a, obviously a lot more support, just population density. Yeah, yeah. Um. But what was really cool was through the entire state of Ohio, I only I didn't have a pacer for only 1.3 miles. Wow. So from like literally mile 2,500. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? I, that would be 500 miles. Yeah. Sure, from yeah. From mile 2,500. To 3,000. To 2,500 and 1.3 miles. That was the only point I didn't have a pacer in Ohio. <laughs> wow. It was like that 1.3 mile stretch. Wow. So... That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, and um, you did, and you had everybody. Were they signing their names in the van too? Was yeah, we had that. We had cool. uh, we had the map up on the RV, um, and we were having people sign it if they came out and you know cheered us on or ran with us. And that's really cool. So, did you also? I saw names on the shoes. Were you also signing the shoes too? Um, that's in the YouTube. Oh, episode. Right. That's in the YouTube. I'm getting ahead. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm curious. No, I was each, curious. Each, each we. <laughs> There's so many shoes, and a lot of them are like all the same color. Yeah, right. Yeah, they're kind of clear. Their inventory. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. So the way we kept track of them was we gave them all names, all the shoes' names. Gotcha. So gotcha. the names of the shoes are written on them, and that helped us keep track of which pair was which. Love it, and that's coming out soon. That comes out, yeah, tonight. I guess. Nice. All right. Nice. All right. Really good. Yeah. Link the YouTube video about right. shoes. <laughs> Love it. Um, I have I have a bunch more questions, but um, we're just at the hour mark, so I won't go too much longer. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll let you get out of here pretty soon. Um, so we had the helmet guy was a big one I wanted to talk about. Um, oh, uh, this is something you probably had planned out well ahead of time, but I mean, and you already talked about a little bit with the with the highways. But one thing I was particularly interested in is running th- into New York City, and you said we're gonna sh- we're gonna shut the streets down. I'm like, are they literally gonna shut the streets down? Did you guys actually? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so. NYPD, this had never been done before ever. I was going to say, like, like, they don't shut the the streets down. New York City. Um, NYPD gave us what they called, like, the presidential escort. Like, how they would would escort, like, the president if they were driving through the city. Yeah. Um, So they had a helicopter up. Wow. Um, They had had a couple cruisers, and then they had, like, 12 motorcycles. I didn't know this. They have have mopeds, NYPD mopeds, too, it turns out. (laughs) That's pretty cool. I couldn't take seriously. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, they had these uh, motorcycles and mopeds. And from we crossed the George Washington Bridge, we did not see a single car. Wow. Like, they shut down the traffic both ways, completely shut down the street all the way for the eight miles from there into Times Square. Wow. You run. For eight miles. For eight miles. So that's like, what's well over an hour, two hours maybe, or uh, hour, hour and a half. Yeah, yeah, a little under an hour and a half. Yeah. So that probably caused some congestion downtown. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure the New Yorkers were a little oh, pissed yeah. off about well, that. Well, it was like, <laughs> it was pretty insane because I describe it as like you're running the New York City Marathon. Sure. Yeah. But you're at the front, <laughs> which yeah. I'm never gonna do. Sure. Sure. Um, because yeah, they're just. These motorcycles just ripping down the sides and shutting off these side streets so cars can't come in. Yeah. Um, and they keep jumping ahead of you. And then, like, I mean, we probably had seven to 700 to 1,000 people running with us. Like, it was Wow. A, I don't know for sure. I'm just making numbers up yeah, because yeah, I yeah. can't see behind a me that way. A ton of people. But it's just like, you look back, I can't see the end of the sea of people behind me. Wow. Um, and, you know, as we get closer, it's just. There are people lining the streets the entire way because they're like, obviously we're making all this noise and <laughs> all this traffic. People yeah. are like, what's going on? Um, so that was super cool. That's uh, um, what a way to finish. Yeah, I mean the taxpayers. I spent all their money <laughs> on the police, but <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Did it, and so I'm obviously like you're doing the running, so you're probably not thinking about that. But is that something your crew was like, hey, we got to figure this out? Like, how do we how do we get the traffic like organized as we're running? To do, like, how do we 
get the logistics down on this. Yeah, I mean, we were just going to run in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what you do. Yeah. Um, but, no, I mean, I was kind of, like, I would get updates from them on how, sure. the, how the planning for things were going. Yeah. Um, but we, there was a member from Team RWB that was in NYPD. Gotcha, And okay. they were on the NYPD running club. Oh, cool. And NYPD running club had an event that they were holding that day already. Uh, and then he kind of pitched this about me coming in, and they're like, cancel that. NYPD running club, we're all going to go and run with him. Yeah. And then the word got up, and basically, like, the deputy commissioner or something, Yeah. she's like, we're just going to shut down the city for this, and we're going to go support it. That's unreal. It's um, so, like she came out. She ran with us the whole way. No way. Um, yeah, so it, was, it just basically turned into this real quick hoopla of, Let's just shut down the city. So I wonder how much, do you know how much, like, you might not, like, how much notice they gave the city on that? Was it, like, a week um, or is it? I mean, we got the confirmation, like, three days before. <laughs> so three days before, they like, hey, by the way, the city's going to be shut down for I a couple mean, hours. <laughs> yeah. I That's guess. awesome. going to deadlock the city. That's some serious strings you got to pull. Yeah. For turns, New York it, City. It turns out I just got to know people. Yeah, literally. Um. All right, so that, those were those are most of the big questions that I want to ask you. I mean, the documentary is coming out, which which is awesome. Um, I'm super excited to, to see that and coming out in the fall. Um, I guess one one thing as far as like getting like back into the rhythm of things. Um, did you have any issues as far as like so because it was such a big big event and then like something you worked so hard for so long for? Did you have any feelings of of like Ugh, what what now? Absolutely. Like, yeah. 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 It's like. Uh, like to other people in the military, I describe it as it's like getting back from deployment. Sure. Like it was sure. like being on deployment. You yeah. Get, you get kind of get into your rhythm and your routine finally, and then it comes to an end. Yeah. And now you're not doing that, and you're like, what am I supposed to do now? Type yeah. Thing. Like what what is my purpose right now? What am I what am I yeah. doing? How do I fill all this time? And so that's definitely been a struggle. It's like I sit at home and I'm like, well, I don't have to spend eight hours running forty miles today for practice. So like, what do I do with all that free time? <laughs> right. Right. It's like, I don't know what to do with. I spent you know last. You know, if you count the two months of the run plus the five months before that, you know, I spent more than half a year doing nothing but eat, sleep, work, run, and repeat. So now I'm like, I have so much time, I don't know what to do with it. Including all the preparation for training for that. Like, that was, like, the the big goal for, what did did you say, was it about a year? Um, Yeah, I mean, it was about a year because that's when I kind of, like, started pushing all the ultra training. Right, right. So now, what, how have you found, like, obviously, it it sounds like it's, it's been a... It's, it's been a an issue that's been on your mind is like how have you find like the ability to like kind of like pivot or like get through that or is just kind of like all right what's next it's just like i gotta keep myself busy <laughs> yeah so like, yeah so i started doing the youtube stuff i'm like nice. oh that'll yeah, yeah. Like, do some long form stuff here um trying to like i'm like i need to start running more because you know for <laughs> me I'm, I'm only doing 40 miles a week right now which for you know right for most people it's like that's pretty significant sure but yeah the shift for me where it's like, okay, before this, I would do like a hundred miles a week, no problem. And just like for fun. Yeah. It's like, okay, I got to start getting back into that. Like start kind of keeping these pieces in my life to keep me busy. Totally. And you have those events coming up with, um, you know, the, the races down the summer. So you're almost in like a little bit of like a, a deload like position where you're right. like not doing super high mileage, but that, that'll probably start to ramp up a little bit as you're getting ready for those yeah, events. We're, just, we're adding a little bit each week and just, kind of bringing it back up do you think you're going to do a lot of like um content type stuff to prep for those events coming up i think so i think you know one of the you know we found a little bit of success with the youtube you know series on the transcon and that was more kind of entertainment based i mean it's all entertainment based yeah yeah but i think style yeah yeah i think what we're going to try to do now is push a little bit more content in terms of like you know how do i prepare for these things Mm. Or like, you know, these are it's a, such a drawn out event. It's like, okay, how much can I really show in like a, a ten minute video? Sure. Um, but then for each of these races, like, well, what's the build up for the race like? Um, you know, trying to be able to get the crew to come film for the you know usually I just film with my phone and that's about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. But yeah. to be able to like capture like an actual like race, yeah, is like completely different in that twenty four hour window than you have over a sixty day. Sure, so, sure. Yeah, that's some of the stuff that we're looking into. Yeah, I feel like that's potentially. I mean, I don't, I don't follow the ultra community as closely as as you do, or maybe other people do. But I feel like that potentially could be an untapped market of like following some of these races, like the like you said, like the Loopy Looper. 
Yeah. Like like um like getting some like video publicity like st- stuff behind. Some yeah, of that because stuff. I mean, like I'm a prime example. The ultra yeah. community is growing very fast. Sure. Sure. Um, in the past like three years, mm-hmm. you know. Like I said, a year ago I was not in it, and now here I am. I've done all these races. I've run a transcon. Like, yeah. it has a mass. It's growing very, very quickly, and I think a lot of people got into running in general after COVID. Yeah, um, yeah. Like you saw that massive uptick, um, and I think, like, I think about like my you know influencer friends on social media. Most of them are all like marathon based, right? Yes, and they're all like yep. putting out all this marathon content and. Uh, you know, or weightlifting or bodybuilding yep. and stuff. Like I think of somebody like uh, like Nick Bear. Nick Bear, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. He, does, he does a phenomenal job, like doing his build up phases and everything else. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and he's done he's done ultras before, yeah, right. Um, but he's really like, you know, running shorter. You know, yeah, he's r- running your typical distances and like yep. in bodybuilding and weightlifting. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that there definitely is like that market that you were saying to totally expose that ultra world even more and get more people involved with it that way. Cause even, even now, I mean, it, people have been doing ultras for a while, obviously, yeah. but like, even now I'll tell someone like, Oh, like, you know, like talk about, Oh, an ultra marathon. They're like, what does that mean? I'm like, well, it's longer than 26.2. 26.3. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and it's longer than 26.2. I'm like, oh, interesting. Like, that's, like, people do that? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've never have, but, well, actually, my first step after a marathon, maybe, there counts. Yeah, no, but. It'll stop the watch after that last <laughs> right, step. Right, right. But, uh, yeah, so definitely a, a market that's, uh, that's untapped, or, or potentially has a lot more room to grow, yeah. which, is, which is really cool. Uh, so I'll be looking forward to, to watching more of your content down the road. Yeah. Um, all right, so. Last couple things that uh that that I'll leave you off with. I mean, you talked about this a little bit already, but anything just kind of like a recap, like um anything in store for the future as far as like um I know you have the races coming up, you have the documentary coming up. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's the big thing right now. The I mean the races are I've done them all already, so yeah. it's really going back and and trying to you know beat my previous best, try to finish Eastern States this time since I DNF last time. You know, Fair. gotta have small goals, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> And then, yeah, Doc coming out the fall. I think that's that's gonna be pretty massive with everything that we're trying to do with it. That's cool. And then um, that really finishes out the year. Oh, I gotta redo my Boston run, my Boston. Oh back, yeah, because I haven't finished that yet. Yeah, you know, third time's a charm, I guess. Are you in? Um, how much longer are you in Newport for? Uh, are, you, are you here for a while? I'm here till f- January or February. Okay, so you got you got, got a little like, under a year. A little less than a year. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then. I guess I won't really be here anymore, but I'm planning on – there's a six-day race. The same place I do the loopy looper at mm-hmm. is a six-day on a track race. So it's just a quarter-mile loop for six days straight on a track. Where I mean, is that? It's in New Jersey, right outside oh of Philly. What's wrong with New Jersey? I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, they just announced that, like – Is that a new race? Yeah. They, oh so they, I think they did it back in the 80s. Okay. And they haven't done it since, and they're like, we're bringing it back. I think there's a – I'm sure, have you read the David Goggins book? Yeah, I think he mentions a race similar to that, right? Yeah, that's a um, that's like a one mile. It's a one mile twenty four hour loop. Okay. So it's like the same style as the Loopy Looper. Okay. But it's a a one mile loop versus like three or four mile loop. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So so even more reps. <laughs> yeah. So this would be like a quarter mile track, like at a football field, for six days straight. Yeah. And like you switch directions every day or something just to change it up. <laughs> okay. You, they allow that. Yeah, well, they have like designated times where they're like, "All right, everybody, switch directions." Oh, gotcha. So, so you're not just like running on one IT band the entire time. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's I think, smart. Yeah. I think, like every four hours or something, they switch directions. <laughs> That's good. Um, and then last question. So last last time, so I, I have kind of a dual, a double question, I guess. Last question. Last time I left you with uh, your favorite quote, and if it's the same, that's fine. The last time you said. Uh, do you remember what you said last time? It's supposed to hurt. <laughs> is it? Is it? Does it it's stay still the same? The same. Yeah. <laughs> All right, nice. Oh yeah. So my my double question because I figured that was going to be the case was um not not so much like a quote question but uh um what and I think I think you've probably answered this a couple times maybe a different podcast but still curious to hear your answer what motivates you during I mean running running in general but yeah. also especially during the transcon when you have those days when you wake up and you're like fuck this I don't want to do this yeah it's. For me, and I think I kind of like discovered this during UTMB last year. Sure. Where I was just getting that shit kicked out of me <laughs> by not being able to eat, and the I was not having a good time. Sure. Um, and as I kind of thought about it, it's like, you know, I've kind of gotten to the point where you know there's a lot of people who are following and watching on social media. Yeah. And for me, it's like all these people are invested in yeah. you know what's going on. 
And I feel like if I stop or I quit or something like that, it's like I've let those people down. Sure. Right? Because sure. they're, they're just as in, you know, entertained and invested in as well. Yeah. And so I think that was definitely one of the um, you know, driving things. Like I think about running past one of the schools yeah. that we ran past. And like literally in elementary school, they're on like one side of a chain link fence and there's 150 of them running alongside <laughs> me on this chain link fence in Illinois. That's cool. And it's like, damn, <laughs> if I don't make it to the finish, they're going to be sad. Yeah. Right, yeah. and it's like so. I think that bit of not wanting to let people down is like part of that driving factor. Totally, totally. I like that a lot. Yeah, it's a community thing. Yeah, exactly. I like it. Really cool. Awesome. Well, we're we're or hour fifteen in. Um, another awesome podcast. Yeah, thank you, man. It. Another another uh, another great time talking to you, and uh, I'm really excited for the documentary to come out. It's gonna be good. Cool. All right, Roadie Strength, we are signing off. Sweet man, thank you. Yeah. It's good stuff. You gotta save your video now. <laughs> <laughs> I